Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 247. And with me today, I've got my good buddy, Scott. Hello. Yeah, and you, I was looking back because you joined me once before, and it yeah. was, I think, episode 120, so. Okay, and where are we at now? Uh, hmm? What episode are you now? Like, almost 250. Jesus So, Christ. it doesn't feel like it's been that long, but I guess it was a while ago. Yeah, whenever we did our thing, it was definitely like like early pandemic, I want to say, right? Like yeah. early, yeah. So yeah, I probably should have had you back sooner, but thanks for coming. I've been back. waiting. <laughs> yeah. My agent's angry. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've noticed since since we last talked, I pick up a co-host. You do. You have a co-host now. Yeah. I mean, I'm not insulted that I wasn't asked, but that's fine. <laughs> well, when I told him that I was going to use you for the next episode, he was—I think he was a little worried that it was going to—it was going to become toy talk with Mike and Scott. But I mean, no one's saying it's not going to become that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how have you been? I haven't seen you since the summer, I, and even that was pretty brief. We went up there to see the Red Hot Chili Peppers and what have you. We popped by the bar to see you. Technically, you, you didn't even busy. see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh so, yeah i wish we could have um, stayed longer but yeah no it was good everything's good um i might be coming to halifax this september for my sister's wedding okay. so we'll see if that actually transpires um but that would be my first time back since i don't even know when like probably like 10 almost 10 years Wow, And so my X-Men YouTube channel, which it was just a hobby, actually got me this job that I'm still at now. So how wild is that? That's awesome. And yeah, I guess if I, I haven't mentioned it already, your, so your YouTube channel is Great X-Mentations. Yeah. And your Instagram <laughs> and all that stuff. And it is a great channel. I'm, I'm very envious of your, uh, your editing and your, your colorfulness and your transitions and everything. Like it's all, uh, it's very professional looking. So I'm not surprised you. that you were able to get some work from that. So uh, yeah, last time you were here, I called you because I got my Hellfire Club mm -hmm. box set. And you are- And how my... has that been treating you, the Hellfire Club? Good. Here's Emma from that uh, set and everything. Looking She's hot. Doing well. Yeah. But one thing I did that came in handy. So they released- a emma frost figure um maybe two years before this one had come out but it was in mm. her black outfit which is a little oh, yeah a little bit more contemporary but even that's probably what 15 years ago i don't know yeah, at this point yeah like a flash in the pan like not even yeah, with an action figure i didn't like it you know like it was a fine figure but i you know she's the white queen she's got to be in her white outfit yeah so she was included in the box set yeah she's a great figure but uh, recently, um, I bought a Jean Grey figure, and she came with some extra heads, like a more neutral head and a more angry head. And mm. uh, so I took that Emma Frost body, and I popped Jean Grey's head on her. Oh. Now, this is a makeshift Goblin Queen for me. I was just going to say a little Madeline Pryor moment. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well so, done. Custom. Yeah, it didn't require any paint Mike. or anything. It's a very easy custom to make. But uh, Oh, well done. Yeah. Yeah. You should post that. Did you post that one? Yeah, it was on my Instagram. Oh, good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, last year, Hasbro, they do uh, these things called HasLab, which is basically like a Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the Ghost Rider one by chance? I Is that the one that failed? Yeah. Didn't one of them like, yeah. Yeah, I did see that uh, one. <laughs> a few of them have failed. But yeah, they wanted to do a Marvel Legends Ghost Rider with the car. So it's yeah. the Robbie Reyes version of Ghost yeah. Rider. And I just don't know if he's that popular because they were asking for like $300 to get this car with Robbie yeah. Reyes. Yeah. And I like him well enough, but I don't really need the car. I don't have room for a car this big in my collection. Yeah. But they added on the stretch goal. So if it had reached X amount of backers, X amount of backers, they were going to give you not just the Ghost Rider version of Robbie Reyes, but a human version of Robbie Reyes. So you get the two yeah. out. Yeah. Then they were going to give you a Mephisto figure. Oh, which, oh, which is pretty beautiful. cool because they're probably not going to make him to sell at Toys R Us. 
He's no. the devil. Right? <laughs> the devil. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this probably would have been one of the few ways we can get him. Like maybe they'll do him at a convention or something yeah. down the road. But the other add-on was Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen, which no ties to Robbie Reyes at all, but just I guess they figured he's from hell. Let's Infernal the energy. Characters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah actually, I think uh the son of Satan, what's his name? Damien Hellstrom was Damon one of the Hellstrom. stretch goals as well. So again, not great really set. Those three alone. Oh my god, those stretch goals. Yeah, Wonderful. but the thing is, so even like that, if they had guaranteed those four figures, I probably would have shelled it with three hundred dollars because Mephisto probably would have been a bigger figure. Yeah, and the car would have been cool. It's just not something I need. Yeah, but I would have had to shell it with three hundred dollars, and there was no guarantee we would get any stretch goals. And yeah. because it was struggling to even get to the the minimum, it didn't seem like they were going to unlock any stretch goals. So and they just stuck with the car. It. <laughs> and I was most disappointed, not about Robbie Reyes or Mephisto. They would have been nice, but I was really disappointed because I thought we were going to get a Madeline Pryor Goblin Queen figure. Yeah. And then we didn't. But then I came up with this. This makeshift, Maddie. Yeah. And it was like, it was like Goblin Queen, like the full classic outfit, right? Like it was the yeah, sexy it wasn't, outfit. I think it was maybe a little tamer Tamer. than uh, like it probably wasn't a thong but it was still a lot of like flesh yeah yeah again the kind of figure like would they put that at retail like they've made some pretty scantily clad figures before i think i mean tiger's uh, just wearing a bathing suit isn't she which one (laughs) tigra yeah (laughs) and yeah there's i think there's a few like that but sure and, but yeah, I just don't know. Not only is she mostly naked, but she's demonic. I don't know if they yeah. did that in a Walmart, but who knows? Speaking of Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen, mm. when she was relevant the first time, that was probably the last time I really read X Men comic books on the regular, Whoa. which is back in the like mid to late eighties, early nineties. Mm. Um, mostly because that's when I still lived at home as a kid, and I collected Spider Man. My brother, Doug, collected X-Men. Once he kind of moved out and I didn't buy X-Men, so I just stopped reading his books and I've totally lost track of the X-Men. So this is where your expertise... Well, a lot's lot's happened since then. (laughs) Yeah, I stick my toe in every now and again and I'm kind of like... Like I know about Krakoa and stuff, but not Kind of messy right now. It's about time they wrap it up, I think. Yeah, like, are you, what are you reading? Do you read the book every month? I read them or? all. I read them every week. I'm like, I keep up to date. I don't like it all. Like, like there's, there's kind of a, there's a crossover happening right now that in my opinion is just a lot of ideas that are not Sins very well. Sinister, is it? The Sins of Sinister. Yeah. And it's just like, it's very lofty. Maybe it'll, sometimes these things read better at the end when it's like in trade paperback form. Like sometimes it's just like got to get like from the cover to cover and then it like all kind of makes sense. Whereas right now, like week to week, I'm just like, what's going on again? Because every week it's shifting decades. And so like last week was 10 years ago. This is the next 10. And so just like a lot has happened kind of in the margins. And it's a storyline that, you know, it's an alternate universe anyway. So it's like you don't really like I don't personally have a lot of investment in any outcome or repercussions because it's all just going to get undid at the end of it and so it's like what could possibly happen that could be a long lasting change but we'll see one recent thing i did read so i want your opinion on this i don't normally talk about comic books on this channel very often but did you read the dark web crossover Mm. so i read the issues i started reading all the issues and then i decided to only read the issues involving the x-men so i read i'll say since it was split half, well, 50, 50% of the crossover, I really liked it. I thought it was good. I liked the writer. You didn't like it? You thought it was terrible. What? But maybe not. Maybe it's like when you say you like the writer, who are you referring to? Zeb Wells? Yeah, okay. That's that's who I'm talking about. Like, he's done some really good stuff on Amazing Spider-Man. Because yeah. he took over about a year ago on the main book. Uh, but it's, it seems like every time he does a crossover, the book just goes off the rails to me. Uh, yeah. And yeah, this dark web, I was super excited about it. I told my comic shop 
to pull everything. So I bought the Miss Marvel mini. Oh no, not everything. <laughs> I have started to read everything and I was like, okay, I don't need to read everything. <laughs> well, like, it's kind of the sequel to an ec- to uh you know Inferno, which was it an is, excellent yeah. crossover when I was about 10 years old, which I loved and I have very yeah. fond memories of. So I was really excited to, for them to revisit all that. Goblin Queen's back, Limbo wow. is back on Earth. And I just thought Zeb Wells wrote it like way too jokey. Like it was. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. That if I was going to say one thing about him that is critical, it would be that he does rely too heavily on jokes and like beating it over the head sometimes. Like I can deal with a joke, but like then move on to the next thing. Yeah. So, so why why he's so acclaimed to me is because he wrote Hellions, which is like the one of the breakthrough series of the Krakoa era X Men, and yeah. it was hands down the best. And why it was good was because he gave each character such distinct voices. And that's yeah. something that I find in anyway, X-Men now like lacks a lot is like, everyone's just kind of saying generic lines. It's hard to get these like, j- like these very, very characterized specific like lines from people. But he was really good at that. Cause it was a lot of B-list villainous characters. And so it was like, it was a, it was a harder thing to kind of dive into and, and, and succeed at. Anyway. So that's why whenever we saw that he was writing this crossover, I was like, Oh, into it. And I didn't mind it. I did not mind it. The X Men well, portions, anyway. I can't. I can't speak to Spider Man. Yeah, like well, Spider Man and Venom and Captain Marvel, like they were all pretty bad. Like he didn't write all of them, but he was writing the main book, like the Alpha and the Omega issue, and the yeah. And yeah, I just I felt it was just super corny. Uh, and I'm a big fan of uh, Ben Riley, the Scarlet the Spider, Spider Man's clone. Yeah. And it was like a character assassination of him again. Like they keep dragging yeah. through the mud and he had no, I didn't understand what his motivations were in this. And he just, I don't know. I could go on and on about, but I was, I was really disappointed considering how much I loved Inferno. Yeah. Dark, Dark Web was a downer. So we're going to talk about the toys. That's what the whole point of this is. <laughs> so, yes. It's not catch up hour with Scotty and Mike. Yes. We can do that later, but that's probably yeah. pretty boring to anybody that would watch this outrageous but agreed (laughs) all right so yeah last time you came on you talked about the hellfire club box set Mm -hmm. i wouldn't bother you with just any single x-men figure because i did get some uh like that retro wave that came out a couple of months ago i got uh, avalanche and uh spiral you liked that oh that's the one i mean that's that's right here year, right yeah so i mean look at that amazing the articulation, as I believe you like to say. Yeah, she's very well done. I'm, I was pretty yeah. impressed with this figure. A unique sculpt, hands yes. down. So yeah, I have got lots of cool X-Men figures. But this one here, this was a box set that I figured I needed you for this. So Okay, well, I'm here for you. It's a pretty impressive box. It's pretty it's good size. Looks cool. Yep, I assume that's all original artworks. I don't think these five yeah. characters would have appeared anywhere together otherwise. No, not really. So I like the box. It kind of looks like a comic book. You got the corner box there. The X-Men logo. And yeah, they all look pretty good. Yeah. I'm not sure who the credited artist is. Yeah, who is the artist? Because it looks amazing. The initials on there are KWC. No idea. Yeah, not sure. And then that's cool. So then you get the artwork of each character on the side. And then the opposite side, you get the same characters except the toys. And then you get an, a clear image of all the toys included in the set. Now, this is a pretty random set <laughs> of figures. Um, I don't really know why they decided to put this together like this. Any thoughts? <laughs> well, the only one who hasn't kind of worked alongside is Pretty Boy. At one point, not like all together at the same time, but they've all kind of crossed paths a little bit, but it doesn't make sense. No. And, and, and like in the grand scheme of things, why are these villains all being chosen to be represented in this wave? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is it like, I'm, I'm happy to get it. I don't love when Hasbro puts box sets together most of the time because you end up getting a character that you didn't really want. It's similar yeah. when they do a build a figure wave. I yeah. end up buying a lot of figures I don't necessarily want. Yeah. But with this set here, I would have bought three of these figures for sure. Let me guess the three. You would have bought 
Strife. Yeah. You would have bought Random. No? You wouldn't have bought Random? He looks the cool. Okay. 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 You would have bought Strife. Vertigo? Yeah. Okay. And then Pretty Boy? Zero. Zero. Oh my yeah. God. I mean, I love that answer for reasons we'll discuss, but okay. Interesting. I just would have oh. thought. Okay, go on. So with Strife, like he's he's the big bad of this set. Yeah. Now I don't know what's been going on with him since oh, the last 30 years. Know. You don't want to know. <laughs> but when Rob Liefeld, this is going, I, I was around back in the day when Rob Liefeld came on to the New Mutants book and he was the artist at first, then he came the, the artist slash writer and he revamped the whole thing. He got rid of all the old characters for the most part, brought in all these new weirdos like Deadpool and Cable and Strife. And it was at the Mutant Liberation Front. Mm -hmm. the MLF. The MLF, baby. But yeah, and what's weird is like, the MLF, I can't remember. I think there was probably seven or eight members of the initial yeah. run. And I don't think any of them have had action figures in modern times. I think in the 90s when Toy Biz was making figures, they made a lot of second yeah. stringer characters like Forearm. I mm. think had an action figure. He back. has one. Yeah. He's lucky. There's no chance of Forearm getting one now. Although he's never say no. Lazy. Like he's a character. Like Liefeld was really bad at that like he would just throw anything at the wall and see what sticks because he was getting out. money for creating figures like yeah he had inked a deal with marvel that in perpetuity he was going to get something on the back end and so he's talked about it on his podcast so he's like i was just making characters left right and center <laughs> and most of them he had no personality forearm has a guy with four arms that's all you yeah. really needed to know about him yeah so yeah but like i couldn't even I, name this those original team members Oh my god! I mean, I could. If you're a fan of like X Men, then I mean, you live these characters live on with you in your heart. Like Forearm has a very special place in at least four places of my heart for sure. Okay. Um, and what was it? Was one of them like there was kind of wild a wild side, guy, right? Or like a wild side kind of guy? Yeah, and kind of like a Wolverine. Like everyone had that like hair, you know, that like stand up straight hair that like Wolverine had. Like Feral had it. Wild side yeah. had it. So he was like the the clay kind of guy who was just like a another wild animal type. Yeah. So I've forgotten most of them, but if you were to ask me, like, because I remember Strife, because the big reveal for him a couple issues after his first appearance was that he took off his helmet and he was Cable's clone Surprise! or whatever. Yeah. But other than or him, was he the real really Cable? Remembered. That's what they didn't want you to know. Yeah, but Zero made it an impression on me because he looked. So simple, and he didn't talk. And I, it was later revealed, he's, isn't he a robot or something? He's an android. But he yeah. has a very heartbreaking story, which we can talk about. Okay. I uh, See, yeah. I don't know much about that at all. Just because I yeah. got off of... I stopped buying X-Force around issue 15 or so. And this is back, probably back in 1993. So, like, yeah. it's been a while. <laughs> That's literally... Like, that issue is literally, like, the executioner crossover. Like, X-Force 15. And that's like pretty much where it like almost ended like a couple of issues later. So yeah, that makes sense for you and your time. People can say what they will about the 90s artwork of guys like Rob Liefeld. But what's even worse than Rob Liefeld is a Rob Liefeld knockoff. And I felt like after a lot of those guys left to do image, Marvel was trying to hire guys that mm. could ape them. And I just, I couldn't bear it. And I thought <laughs> X-Force was kind of, you know, it was a guilty pleasure. It was like a big dumb popcorn movie. Yeah. And once the uh all you know, once it didn't look good anymore, I was just like, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. Once the gasoline was gone from the fire, it was just like burning and thundering. I mean, it's definitely the action movie of the 90s um comics of X-Men. Yeah. X Forces. So let's go through them individually. So strike. Okay. They actually released Strife a couple of years ago. I think it was probably around 2013 that they made a Strife figure in Marvel Legends. And I wasn't collecting Marvel Legends at that time because I was buying the three and three quarter inch Marvel uh -huh. Universe figures. And I was kind of going all in on them. I had a pretty big collection of those things. And Marvel Legends had been dormant at the six inch scale for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. 
And then they started bringing it back. And this guy would came around probably about like the third or fourth wave of six inch figures. And I was like, well, he's cool. Cause I've never had a strife figure and they probably aren't going to make him in the three and three quarter inch, but yeah. he just wouldn't fit in my collection anywhere. So I passed on him. And then a couple of years later, well, maybe a year later, they kind of phased out the three and three quarter inch. And then the six inch was like up and running and they were really making cool figures. And I was like, damn it, I'm going to have to switch to the six inch <laughs> scale. And a couple of figures I missed out on was Strife and Baron Zemo. And I was really bummed because they were really, really cool figures. And now they were really expensive on the secondary market. Mm. I didn't realize he was like a store exclusive when I saw him at Toys R Us. So uh, he was already hard to find for a lot of people. Yeah. But I remember seeing him around for months back in the day. And now that I, I wanted him, he was impossible to find. Probably yeah. 200 bucks or more on eBay. Yeah. I wasn't willing to shell that out. So I'm glad that they've re-released him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you do. If this is the exact same figure, maybe he's got some different paint apps. Maybe he's got some different parts or he could be a completely new sculpt. I don't think so, but. I like, all I can say is the yeah. impracticality of the costume is so comic book accurate that I love the look of this figure like can he even yeah. turn his head can he go like side to side because he uh, shouldn't be able to oh, okay okay i guess that that steel that helmet like is ridiculous yeah. <laughs> like this would be so dangerous to wear i know i know and the spikes on the shoulder that's supposed to like if you look at the drawings in the comics it's like not nothing about this should be able to get beyond like anything else that's like all around his like armor but yeah. the, so looking at that i'm like I, like i'm fanboying huge because i think it is like that they they skimped nowhere in terms of really going the extra mile to make yeah. it extra yeah like he looks great like he's covered he's almost hard to hold on to because he's got spikes on his legs on his yeah boots, exactly on his shoulders on his head like he's sharp <laughs> to hold on to um but it yeah, looks really huge. Cool. like like just me looking at you holding him right now he looks humongous in your hand he is big. I'll just quickly bring up Vertigo. Like, yeah. So yeah, he's like a head taller than a standard figure. Plus, he is a little like thicker. So yeah, yeah robust. He's, yeah, he's a good sized figure. And who knows? Like when I'm trying to justify the cost of this set because it wasn't cheap. Mm -hmm. And I do kind of feel that if they're going to make me buy figures in bulk, it's almost a guarantee that anybody that buys this, there's one or two figures that they didn't really want. Yeah, I figure they should be cheaper. If a figure on its own is 30 bucks, this should be the cost of maybe four figures and the fifth yes. one's a bonus. Instead, it's like the cost the of math. six figures. I yeah. like, <laughs> but when you get a big figure like this, it helps me justify that they might have tried to sell this as a deluxe figure anyway in a, in a wider box. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, well, this might have been a $50 figure instead of a $30 figure anyway. So Right. Like the Mojo thing where they ended up selling yeah. Mojo separately. Yeah. Although to that point of if this were a deluxe figure, he came with fisted hands that you can swap out. Right now he's got his clutching hands, but that's it. Like, I think he should have had a swappable unmasked head. It seems like a missed opportunity. Oh, for the Caleb head or um, the Cable, cable head? The yeah. Caleb, is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that seems like a no brainer. It, it can't even pop off the head? It could probably pop off. But I don't have a cable, like I have a cable figure, but if I take his head off, then I don't have a cable. <laughs> um, and if they knew that, if they knew that they released a cable figure with like an angry face and a nice face, they could say, you can put your mean face on this guy. Yeah. But most people don't have an extra cable head floating around. So I think he should have no. I agree, because that was the big reveal. That was the huge moment. Him yeah. even masquerading as cable and pretending to kill Professor X as Cable. Like, that was the big the big claim to infamy yeah. for him. You, so would what, hate what, you, you would hate what's become of him now. You would hate it. He was a such, bit. A, what, what's, what's he was the such a badass character. Like, in the 90s, like, you would put him right up there with, like, Apocalypse, Mr. Sinister, like, all of those, like, top-tier villains. Yeah, And then ever since then, every time, because he keeps coming back and it's just, it dilutes and dilutes and dilutes him so much to the point that even like Boom Boom is like throwing bombs and like knocking him out. Like, and there was like an 
uncanny X-Force, like maybe like 10, 15 years ago now, where he like sought revenge over Bishop and Hope over like the Messiah complex stuff. Anyway, yeah. but like it was like Psylocke's team and like this other like this other X-Force team that were like totally just whipping him around the I was like, no, he's supposed to be this like huge menacing force. Like he's cable without like the the techno the like the the virus so virus isn't it yeah he's supposed to be have like all this unfettered power but like how are all these teams just constantly like beating him so every time he yeah. comes back he just gets and so he's back right now like like two weeks ago or something he like came back and he's like i don't know it was just a reveal at the end that he's and now he's in the past past or something like the distant past kind of too because you know how he's from the future it's all about time travel with him yeah. but now he's in like the past past trying to like make his whole legacy known again anyway it's it's just bad it's just like it's never a good menacing easy threat that he was in the 90s and he's always just constantly being thrown around with weird storylines and being defeated 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 without ever actually accomplishing anything and to me that that's not the makings for a good super bad villain no does it and does he still run the mlf does he still have the same crew or no 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 no. he doesn't even bother with that he's always just like by himself now and like and whenever he shows up, he's by himself or like just recruiting new minions. Well, let's move on to the next one. So I'm gonna go to zero now. Ah, uh, so just kind of so I didn't think you would want this because it's such a simple care, it's such a simple figure. And that one, he's great. Like, yeah, he looks good. Um, look, they put him on, I don't know which base body this is. I'm sure it's because people tend to call these things like this is the pizza spidey body because there was a spider-man that came with a pizza slice or the Bucky <laughs> body because there was like a bucky captain america so yeah. he, some people know the bodies instantaneously i'm not that deep that i look at this and i'm like i'm sure this thing from the neck down is reused from <laughs> one of those guys it's the but, uh, i don't know which figure but like the base body it's hard to complain like he's got that double jointed knees and elbows and stuff. So he's got a good range of motion and, you know, he can kick his own butt and his own face and yeah. But yeah, he's very, very simple character. Very simple character. Maybe now we'll finally get the spot from Spider-Man because he's basically. The uh, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That is a perfect, just like formation for customs out there yeah. yeah too bad you have to spend 170 bucks yeah <laughs> you know, if he was on the shelf for 30 dollars, because i could imagine this guy being like a peg warmer sitting around that yeah. the kids wouldn't want i would yeah. buy it up and i'd definitely turn it into a spot yeah I'm not much for customizing but that seems like a pretty easy one to do yeah come on black circles i can do this i can do this yeah <laughs> so yeah other than his initial appearances where he was silent and I did get at least as far into it when I think I learned he was an android, but I didn't really know his origins. Mm-hmm. So the the figure is basic. It's great. But you can tell me a little bit about his back. He becomes such a wonderful character because he's actually like a good guy. And so he's like an android from the future who like yeah. Strife brings with him to present day. And he becomes like Strife's like right hand, like man, android. Does he talk now? He, he, yes, he does talk because he goes on a quest to find like sentience. And so he wants to be alive. Like every AI or every robot ever wants, right? Okay. They always want to be alive. <laughs> and so it happens in like, you know, Excalibur, the series. It's like the later Excalibur stuff, kind of when it starts getting a little bit like, I mean, it was always a weird book. Whenever it starts getting like too weird to be like. Back in my day, it was a great book. The original. Alan Davis I mean, yes. artwork, fantastic. Yes. fantastic. But yeah, anything, any modern interpretation of it seems like it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this was still, this was like late 90s. This was like, I want to say 97, maybe later. But like, yeah. so he goes on a quest to like, kind of become a human, if you will. And, and, and it's all kind of about him achieving it, but then like never achieving it because Strife had actually like, he had built in safeguards within him so that he would like self-destruct if he ever achieved the ability to unlock his inner humanity. And so oh. he was like, yeah, I know. So it's really heartbreaking. And he had like, he had like the cure inside of him to like cure the legacy virus and everything, which was like Stripe's famous virus yeah. that he put out into the mutant world. So it was all, it was all very sad to see him go. 
but like yeah and like, he exploded so <laughs> yeah, well i mean no one's ever dead i know like did he, he come shows back up in like the krakoan age isn't that what that's all about well he's an android he's not a mutant so the laws of krakoa were that only mutants can come back which eventually changed to select humans as well because of peace talks with the human race okay anyway pol- krakoan politics so, but no, he was never, he was like, like uh, versions of him came because there's like, there's like an army of zeros, right? Like from the future. And so yeah. like versions of him have come out, but I don't think that the one that like, you know, and that like was so, uh, so heartbreakingly tragic. I don't think he ever came back. I think his like consciousness survived within like Warlock or Douglock or somebody, but like yeah. other than that, no, which well, is yeah, good, which is good. It's a good him, story. But- no, in in the '90s, I really liked the character Deathlock, <laughs> and he was a character that had originated in like the '70s. That was before my time, and he was kind of dormant. They brought him back in the '90s mm-hmm. as a unique guy, Michael Collins. He was his brain got put inside this killer yeah. cyborg, and he had his own series, and it was really good. And I would totally be interested in reading about a like if they brought Deathlock back, but they keep bringing Deathlock back over and over again. But it's always some like. <laughs> you know like like you said there's knockoffs of him or like ones that don't yeah. have emotional core like there was a deathlock on x-force there a while back yeah yep. um there's currently deathlocks in jason aaron's Sa- avengers run the run savage avengers yep. yeah they're in the savage <laughs> avengers yeah like but i want the michael collins deathlock no, I, like I want the original zero. <laughs> i know i would love i always thought zero was so interesting well I mean, I didn't think he was so super interesting initially, but then whenever he, that emotional story arc came about, I was like, oh my yeah. God, not Zero. Not the android having real feelings. Now, one thing that's cool about this figure is so he only has extra hands and they're kind of weird because he's got, I've got him here with his fisted hands, but mm. he comes with like karate choppy hands, like they're open palm, like, this, like which is kind of strange. I don't think he really needs them. But he, I feel like he needs port- like portal casting hands. Like that's like how we remember him as like the teleporter, right? Yeah. So if you go into Toys R Us right now, they have a deluxe Doctor Strange figure that they try and sell for 60 bucks, which is a huge ripoff because he's <laughs> basically just a Doctor Strange figure with a couple <laughs> of extra hands. But he comes with this big translucent, you know, mm. swing ring doohickey. And right. Zero, they repainted it for Zero. So he's got a big translucent little oh, slip yeah. And uh, oh, that's fine, oh, right? That's so cute. That is pretty cool. And it's the kind yeah. of thing that, again, knowing that they sell the Doctor Strange for 60 bucks, yeah. total bullshit, but <laughs> it helps justify the cost of this thing a little bit more. Because in Hasbro's mind, this is this is worth an extra $30, apparently. Wow. So Zero is the one who got, like, the big attachment in this box set? Yeah. Zero is the man. All right. <laughs> Zero, you finally got your humanity. <laughs> yeah. So I really think that because uh, like he is kind of bland looking. But if you have yeah. him stepping through his little portal here or something, it definitely spices him up. Yeah. I see some dimension there already. God. Yeah. There's Zero like finally bit, made it. I don't remember how they colored it, but like it's got like a little bit of that Jack Kirby crackle kind yeah. of at the bottom. <laughs> going there. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. That's good. All right, Zero. Well done. All right. So we'll move on to... So that made sense. So Strife and Zero made sense as a pairing. That made the most sense out of this box set. Okay. Now, let's go with the most random one. Random. Now, (laughs) I'll be honest. I know nothing about this guy. I've never read a comic book with random in it. And I've never watched the X-Men animated series of the 90s. Like, So I do have the old... Oh, Toy yeah. Bait. Oh, look at that stuff. Mm. Yeah, he's pretty big and beefy back then. Now, this is not one that I would have bought. I was collecting Toy Biz in the 90s, but this is actually something I got later in life. A friend of mine who knows I collect toys, a coworker friend, they're like, yeah, you collect toys. My brother has a bunch. He was over at Mom's the other day and he found a big box of toys and he was going to throw it out. And I said, no, give it to me. I'll give it to my coworker. <laughs> Yeah. So there was some cool like toy biz figures in there, like Wolverine and everything, but yeah, random was included. So that's why I own this thing. Does he have projectile power that he, shoots out of that? He did. He I don't know. Time. He doesn't have a little knob on him. So I don't know. You might have cool. just put them in yeah. there. And I don't know how you get them out. You might have just had to shoot <laughs> them out or something. But same as this guy. Like he doesn't have any projectiles, but he's got hollowed out. Oh, nothing comes out? 
Yeah. That's him taking this opportunity here. He has no accessory. Nope. What? You can see on the back of the box that they show you what each guy comes with and randoms get nothing. They're always doing, you know what? There doesn't surprise me because they're always doing random wrong. So what, so what do you think of this guy? Is he, is he wrong or is he good? He's good. He's good. So here's the deal with random. So he debuted in X Factor, like, um, I want to say not towards the end, but like issue like 90 or something like that, when it was like the team of Polaris and Havoc and Multiple Man, Strong yeah. Guy. So great run, the initial X Factor run. Um, and he was a bounty hunter. And so yeah. he was, but he was like kind of not like anti hero y, but like he had like a conscience because he had a crush on Polaris. And so he was always trying to like save her and like help her and never wants to like, he definitely has like a her. Lobo kind of vibe. Very Lobo y. Yeah. yeah. But, and so, and so for a long time, he was like sometimes working with X Factor, sometimes working against X Factor, whoever like was paying him. Um, <laughs> And he was just this guy. He's got like ectoplasmic skin. So he can like change his hands to kind of be whatever. He usually chooses these guns as like his main weapon. Yeah. Um, anyway, his character assassination happened whenever they revealed that he's not actually how he comes across. And he's actually a teenager who developed the power to change his like body formation. And he just thought that being this like super cool bounty hunter would like look good but he's actually this like skinny little like 18 year old twink and yeah. like this is just how he changes himself to look and like whenever that happened i think there was like a collective rolling of the eyes of everybody who had been reading because it's like that was um he was a cool character i mean yeah. he was your basic like i'm out to kill guys like i'm i'm a cool shoot a gun shoot him up style blah 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 like it was very yeah. kind of basic in like terms of that one gripe i have about the figure like it's a nice figure but like yeah. he's got this separate piece of barbed wire wrapped around his arm that slides around kind of awkwardly yeah no that's that's key in his costuming like but in yeah, terms of the such a 90s book accuracy thing. yeah 90s badass yeah exactly which i'm glad he has it if it's part of his costume but i kind of wish they had just I, like glued it in place kind of thing because having it slide right. around is kind of pointless yeah the tattoos yeah. look good. He's got the snake tattoo there, yeah. <laughs> and the mom tattoo or whatever over here. Yeah. So like, so I would say his initial appearances were always very, very fun because he was just like a new element to add in this X Factor lineup, kind of a different. Is he going to be bad? Is he going to be good? And then when they went and did, oh, this is who he really is. It was kind of like ah, uh, that kind of made me lose a little bit of interest. It's yeah. cool in that it's unique, but um. Ever ever since that happened, he never really came back into any kind of prominence in any kind of titles. That, like, I guess maybe the fact that he chooses this form is kind of unique, but it's, you yeah. know, between Shazam and even uh, Rage from the... I mean, yeah. Aren't they just all their kids that are yeah. like big bulky Or guys. Prime from the Ultraverse, if anybody remembers that. Like, it's I'm just wrong. little kids. Them, in, but... Yeah, little kids in, like, big hulking forms. So it's like... I guess at the time, maybe it was novel. Now it is very, like, been there, done that. I yeah. get it. Like, it's, like, insecurities. Like, in terms of, like, a character, like, an inner character emotional arc, like, sure, that's fine. Insecurities and, like, being a super skinny kid and, like, suddenly having the power to, like, grow up into, like, be a beef cake. It's, like, sure. Yeah. But kind of just takes away from. It's definitely an no. improvement over the uh, the Toy Biz one. Well, Yes, and that's why I thought you would want this one because it's such a unique, like, I, like it's such a unique shape and a unique figure. Well, like he's cool in like that he is unique. Sure, he stands out, but like when I have no ties to the character, like I like I'm a Marvel nerd. That you could get any time you give me an original character, I'm happy to to add one to my collection. Like I was just talking about earlier, how when you have a build a figure, you end up buying shitty figures. I just got the uh, figures from the Puff Adder wave. So I'm trying to build, <laughs> and it comes with like Molecule Man. Yeah. And like a couple other wankers like that. And I'm like, I don't need a Molecule Man, but no, I've never had a Molecule either. Man before. He's, yeah. you know, he's unique. All right. Well, who would you like to talk about next? Okay. Well, let's go to Vertigo then. Okay. This the is the lady. one I was most excited about this one. The most excited about. Oh my God, you yeah. continue to shock me today. So 
In the same way, now, again, see if we delete that first video, because we talked about a bunch of shit and maybe it won't make the final cut. So I kind of have to recap a little okay, bit. Okay. We, we were talking earlier about how much I liked Inferno and the Goblin Queen and all that sort of stuff. So I was glad they were revisiting it recently with Dark Web. Well, when I started reading comic books in 86, the mutant massacre was even earlier than Inferno mm. and very, very early days for me. Like, and so, yeah, that when you first met these guys, when they killed that like rainbow chick, you know, what's, uh, what's her name? Tommy. Yeah. And that was a character. I remember that issue vividly. This poor girl is running away. She gets killed. And I thought never to be seen again. And I learned through one of your videos that they resurrected <laughs> that character all these just recently. Later. Yeah, um, exactly. But yeah, that issue made an impression on me because it just was so jarring to like my nine year old self, like the, this ruthless murder and like Harpoon was so like he like burned you into nothingness and they yeah. were so violent and nasty. And yeah, Vertigo was one of those original Marauders and like none of them have gotten action figures like no Sabretooth, who I don't even really because he wasn't there in that original reveal. Like, sure, we've got lots of Sabretooths, but like I don't think there's ever dating back to even the 90s toy biz when they were making everybody i don't think mm. they ever made scalp hunter harpoon uh Arc, does riptide Arc have one hmm? riptide does he have one no like in a tornado form not even yeah. oh, wow. and again maybe one or two of them had them in the toy biz years because i didn't really mm. i kind of lost track because they made every goofball that rob okay. Liefeld came up with like <laughs> yeah. stuff. they all had figures so it wouldn't surprise me if there was maybe a Riptide or something then, but I don't think so. I don't and think I so. I know none of them have had them in the Marvel Legends line in, in no. modern six-inch style. So no. she's the first. And hopefully... Vertigo of all. Of all yeah, the ones. We'll get the whole team eventually. Yeah. Because in my mind, these guys are such violent characters. She looks a little too neutral for me. Like, she's <laughs> a little too chill. I normally don't like my figures to be too expressive. Like... I like kind of a neutral face, but I feel with her, she should have a sneer or something, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, they usually make her very pretty in the comics, which, if you go back to the Mutant Massacre, she wasn't that pretty. She had very like angular, kind of yeah. bony cheekbones and everything, making her look a little bit more like malevolent. Like she's pretty here. This is a nice sculpt. Yeah. But uh, all right. So, what are your like the figure's nice? It is. With any of the female figures, like she's got double jointed knees, which is good. So she's got a good range of motion on her legs. Mm -hmm. But where their arms are skinnier, she's got a single joint on her elbow. And it, I'm scared to bend them almost because it's such a thin little one piece mm -hmm. of plastic connecting the two pieces that I'm scared. It always feels like it's going to break. So that's a little scary. I wish they felt a little more durable. In that <laughs> regard. But otherwise, I've got no complaints about this figure. Like it's very simple. Yeah, uh, she needs. That's all she needs. I'm glad they didn't like try and overcomplicate it. But yeah, don't you think that this would have been better with a power signature? Like, Absolutely. you know what I mean? The Vertigo lines. Yeah. Now the thing is, like, I've got a whole bag of because I used to keep. A, I have a bin of accessories, and I used to have GI Joe accessories, Marvel Legends accessories. My Marvel Legend collection has grown so big, I had to say, okay, I'm going to take out all the heads. I've got a bag mm. of just heads and then all the other stuff. And then I had to separate all the hands because some Spider-Mans <laughs> come with like eight hands. And I had so many hands. And then I got to the point where I had so many power effects. I had to take a separate like freezer bag full of just plastic. <laughs> so yes, I think she should have had those same translucent plasticky gummy effects that Jubilee and Dazzler mm -hmm. always come with. Mm -hmm. I probably have a bunch of them I could give her, but I don't yeah. know if I have any green ones. And she really kind of needs green ones. She needs green. Although if you follow the animated series version of her, it was very rainbowy. It was very like, and even yeah. her dress, her, she wore like this rainbow kind of dress like Austin Powers chicks would wear. So it was like, you could go one or the other with her, mash her up. Yeah, well, this is clearly the white and green comic well, version. Clearly, so, yeah, yeah. I think she needs some green effects. <laughs> I might have some, like I'm looking right now, the Enchantress mm. has a couple. Yeah, so like oh, Enchantress has got a couple of effects, like Vertigo, yeah. she's got some weird cobwebs on her too. But uh, yeah, Vertigo needs something like that. Yeah, just to make it all complete, just to make it cohesive and complete. Yeah, and like, so she came with, again, if you look at this picture here, she came with uh, fisted hands. So she's got open hands and fisted hands. 
But even that, I feel she should have like zero. You're like you want the spell cast hands, yeah. Which so many female characters have that don't really need them, yeah. And then here they give her just these weird kind of open palm hands. Mm. When they should have given her spell casty hands spell with the effects, hands. yeah. So because she doesn't really talking. engage in fisticuffs. She's the she's the her power is one that you like do from afar. So there's no there's no point for her to need a fist. Yeah. So. Anyway, it's a cool figure. I'm glad that I got her. And, yeah. she, and so I know you said she had a different costume in the cartoon, but in all the yes. years since I've read a comic book with her, has she kept this costume essentially? She's never changed. She's one thing, she's consistent. <laughs> That's what she is. So there's like, it's up for debate if there's two versions of Vertigo or one, because there's the Savage Land Mutate, which is where she debuted as a member of the Savage Land. And then there's her and the Marauders. And it's never like, identified that they're one and the same i think so it's like maybe mr sinister cloned the version that's in the savage land and like made her a marauder or maybe it's the same one there's like what because gambit's the one who like organized and got all the marauders together and there's like a flashback where he finds vertigo begging for money at a pier and so it's yeah. like maybe she came across the ocean from the savage land and that's how she got recruited into the team it's never really i mean she's a minor minor character so it's never really explored so but she's no, never she's had like a zero moment where she got beat. not yet everyone's waiting for it her time is coming there she almost made a comeback in the, like the saber tooth mini like last year whenever they were like hunting for the old um marauders but it ended up just being a, a ploy and they weren't actually looking for them they were just doing something else but they were like saying we got to find vertigo da, da, da. but no she never i don't even think we've seen her other than when madeline Pryor used her as a zombie in like a, a spell during hellions that was like the last time i think we ever saw her so i don't even know if she's running around these days which is a shame because she is she's a popular marauder of all the marauders i'd say yeah she was probably my favorite even like none of them were very well developed in those early days no but yeah i like the look of her the best probably yeah and they were very absent in the 90s like i didn't even really know because i started reading in the 90s and i didn't even really know about them until i went back in time to like yeah find, like know all the storylines yeah all right so the last figure that we have to talk about is pretty boy so pretty now this guy like when we said earlier this is a maybe buy for me mm. like, even like he's from the same era, sort of, from some of these mm -hmm. other characters that I started collecting comic books. So I'm nostalgic for the massacre and for Inferno. I probably should be more nostalgic for the Reavers, but just they, I don't know. I guess it's good they all had a theme that they all kind of looked similar, but because of that, they didn't really stand out to me. They weren't all that interesting. You know, they seem like they could have been cyborgs from any science fiction, Terminator, yeah. or Mad Max, or whatever. Like, they just didn't really seem particularly interesting to me. So I don't have yeah. that same attachment. Um, the other reason is they've made a few of them. It's taken a really long time. Now, I couldn't even tell you who I'm missing, because I knew the Reavers were like a squad of seven guys again or whatever like i can picture that cover of them kind of like all charging forward yeah um so in the hellfire box set that we reviewed we got donald pierce and i think you reminded me in that video that he was a reaver and i had forgotten he's a he's a dork in like a <laughs> like a frilly suit and he came with yeah. hands and i was like why does this guy have metal hands and you're like because he became a reaver later and i was like oh yeah so I yes. have him, but he doesn't really look the part to be running around with him. No, he's yeah. dressed in his Hellfire formal wear, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then they did do, is it Skullbuster Skull. or Skull? Bone. bone ah, well, not Bone Crit. There's the guy with the black makeup where he's got a skull painted on his face. That's Skullbuster. So they made Skullbuster as, a, as an individual figure that you could buy in the stores yeah well, what's interesting about him is he came with an extra head for um the blonde guy with the, the glass visor blonde guy with the black glass visor yeah he was a reaver yeah 
He's got kind of like a, a glass thing across his face here. Oh, like Cole, like the, the so there's like Cole, Macon, and Reese who were like the three Hellfire guards who got Maybe it was mutilated Reese. by Wolverine and like turned into cyborgs and became the Reavers. They all okay. kind of like, those are the ones that look the most generic kind yeah, of. Yeah, I, I can't swear by which one it was, but I'm thinking it was Reese maybe. Right. So he came yeah. at just his random head. So if you wanted oh. to pop the skull buster head off you could put the reese head on and the yeah. body was i guess kind of generic cyborgy enough that they thought it would pass for <laughs> yeah. but i don't you know i only bought the figure once what i've seen a lot of people do is buy the gung-ho from the gi joe classified because he's okay. bare he's bare chested with a green uh vest and everything and that head looks really good on that body that's more so what the costume is anyway yeah for those three characters yeah so that works but i didn't do that because i don't want to take my gung-ho head off <laughs> so i'm missing essentially i'm missing that reaver even though they made him and yeah. then they did bone breaker bone breaker that's the but one yeah he was a build a figure for an all x-men wave yeah and where i'm not a big diehard x-men fan and even bone breaker i was like I, I can't justify spending 125 bucks to get these guys because it would have meant I would have had to buy characters like Maggot, who I have like zero, zero oh, attachment yeah. to and yeah. stuff like that. So I'm missing Bonebreaker. I'm missing Reese. My my Ugh. Donald Pierce doesn't really look the part. So it's not Where's like... Where's your Lady Deathstrike? Hmm? Do you even I have a Lady Deathstrike? I have a Lady Deathstrike, yes. There you go. But yeah, so for that reason, the team is probably going to remain incomplete. So yeah. that's why he didn't feel as essential. But yeah. anyway, I did get him because he's part of the set. And yeah. he's, I don't know, even as he's kind of <laughs> goofy looking. Yeah. What yeah. are your thoughts on? Do you like this guy? Um, so the Reavers, like they're instrumental in the formation. Without the Reavers, there never would have been like the 90s Renaissance, right? Because they're they're the ones who are kind of as where it's pinpointed in X-Men lore is whenever they were there and they were going to kill the X-Men and they all went through, the X-Men all went through like this portal and they all got pushed into different parts of the world. And then the nineties teams were formed like, like, like 10 issues after that. And so it's always like that pivotal moment in time that reshaped the X-Men to kind of being what made them so popular. I always attribute to being like the Reavers' fault because that's who they were running away from. That's who, that's why they went into the portal. And then that's how the X-Men that we know now and love got formed, basically. So that said, yeah. ever since then, <laughs> they haven't really done a lot. So it's kind of like this box that is kind of like big names from the past who have like just kind of been seen as flops in like the here and now. And so they've shown up. And there was a really good Uncanny X-Force issue. It was like one of those like 5.1 issues where like yeah. they got revenge on the Reavers for that very moment in time where it's like they went to Australia and they like went back to their Outback base and they like hunted them down and like finally said, huh, this is what you get. Here's your comeuppance. Um, but ever since then, they've been around, but they're mostly used as like jobbers, right? They're mostly there as like people who can just like get beat up and don't really yeah. have much effect in a long lasting way anymore yeah like he's just but pretty boy is so pretty like part of his <laughs> charm is that he's got this pretty face on this goofy yeah like, misproportionate like body so misproportioned but i think that's the intent right that's like, the intent but at yeah. the same time it makes him not very cool like if he yeah. was a handsome head <laughs> on like ultron's body yeah. That would maybe work, but he look he's more like on C three PO's body or something. And yeah, it's just like it's kind of kind of goofy looking. So it's hard goofy. to take him very seriously. He has, you know, it's a shame that they didn't include. So he, of all the Reavers, they all not all, but like some of them have like some unique ability or some unique property. And so his unique ability is that he has tendrils that like come out of his eyes that like he yeah. attaches to like his victims in order to like turn them into cyborgs. So that would have been cool if they gave you like some sort of tendril head or something. That would have been cool. Yeah. The head, I don't know if you can really see it that clearly, but it to me looks a oh, lot handsome. like Bruce Campbell from the Army. Bruce Campbell. People did. I mean, he gives me, yeah, definitely that, a little bit of Punisher too without like the scruff and a little bit of Beyonder too without like the moose. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like you can definitely use this head. He's a little too mullety for a Punisher, I think. But mm. I think, yeah, you could probably pull off a Beyonder custom with this if you wanted to. If you really wanted one. <laughs> so accessories wise, he comes with fisted hands and gun hands. Then he comes with the two guns. And it comes with, cool. as you can see, little green blast effects. And yeah. he also has green smoke effects. So you can make it look like his guns just went off and there's a little uh, smoke trail. A trail of smoke. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that's a specific story point that he shoots in green. But <laughs> like, I can't say that I remember that being a pivotal part of his character lore. No. Yeah, it's because like the green blast, I wouldn't think anything of it. That's just differentiating from the mostly yellow ones that I have. But the fact yeah. that they even went to include green smoke effects when usually those are kind of a cloudy gray effect when you get them. With yeah. Then I'm like, I don't know. They they obviously wanted him to be maybe. Green. Yeah. Maybe I haven't paid attention enough to Pretty Boy. Just keep looking at his yeah. pretty face. So yeah, it's it's an okay figure. But if this had been on the pegs for thirty five bucks, I think I would have left him behind. Yeah. But to yeah. get him in this set, again, I'd rather get Pretty Boy, who I think is kind of lame, than, say, Magneto in another outfit. He's a better uh-huh. character, but I already have a Magneto or two, and I just, I yeah. don't like getting characters that I don't need. So, yeah, give me new characters like this, and I'm happy. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's rare when a set like this, now, arguably, some people might have had the old Strife. And if they want yeah. zero, they have to buy a duplicate of Strife, and that might piss them off. But I think it was one of the most demanded re-releases because a lot Marvel Legends has gained a lot of followers in the last 10 years or so, and so many people didn't get that exclusive Toys R Us figure from like 10 years yeah. ago. So, yeah, I think most people, this is an all-new set, which is great. Yeah. Because like recently, like I had to get a, there was like a Venom and Null two-pack two set. Um there's a there's a Dr. Octopus and Aunt May two pack. Right <laughs> and you're like, if you want that cool Dr. Octopus, you have to buy an Aunt May. Gotta stuff for the Aunt May too. <laughs> and yeah, or if you want the Aunt May, you get stuck with the Dr. Octopus. Maybe you don't want. But yeah. yeah, it's rare when I get a case like this. And it's like, wow, five figure box set. And I want all of them. Like for Christmas this past year, I got a box set, the same style, the size box. Right, and it was a Spider Man villain set, so it came with Razorback. Oh, wow, Molten Man, Molten uh, Man, Oof. yeah, uh, the human fly and Silvermane. So, oh, not all winners necessarily, but all <laughs> unique characters that had, to yeah. Be so, I was stoked to get all four of those guys, but then it also came with a black suit Spider Man, which I definitely did not need. Um, so yeah, in a case like this, all five worthwhile characters i'm pretty do you think they're making more effort to really do those more unique characters instead of just like obvious like body paints these days i know they come under fire sometimes of like because the price point it can be quite high and it's like again for something that like it's just Boys R Us, these are selling for like 50 bucks for a basic That's figure insane. they're like 44.99 it's crazy yeah. So which one, if you're going to rank all of these, what's like your favorite in the box set to your least favorite? Well, there wasn't anything here that really shocked me. Like, I would say Pretty Boy is easily the bottom. Yeah. Um, probably followed by Random. And, uh, man, I don't know. I, I like all these other three. Like, maybe Zero Strife Vertigo at the top. Okay, very good at the top. Wow. I mean, I thought Strife for sure. Yeah, like he's he's cool. Yeah. But at the same time, he's I'm nostalgic for him, but he's from an era where in my mind it was still kind of where things started going wrong. Like I really liked the New Mutants comic book with that team yeah. with with Doug and Sunspot and you know Karma and Mirage and all that stuff. When Liefeld came in there and was like, no, let's replace them all with Feral and Shatterstar and all these other <laughs> 90s guys full of pouches and everything. Like, as a kid, I kind of ate it up, but it did kind of just dumb down the comic. And so Strife, he's he's very much like Rob Liefeld for me. Like, I think <laughs> Rob Liefeld is a terrible artist. There's websites devoted to 
how terrible he is at human proportions. And he hasn't yeah. gotten any better in the last 30 years. Like if he still draws comic books now and they're like ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yet I kind of love it too. I consider myself a Rob Liefeld fan, despite yeah. you know, terrible. Yeah. So just like me and Greg Land, to. as Greg Land is my most favorite artist out there. I know that there's a lot of haters, but I'm like, oh, I just like the look of it. I ended yeah. up liking the look of it, what art's all about. So with him, it's a little bit of a love-hate yeah. relationship. Whereas Vertigo, she's more from a time when I think X-Men comic books were at their best mm. for me. So yeah. so yeah, that's why I'm kind of most pleased with her. Good. She's she wins, bland. yes. She wins the heartfelt, the heartfelt moment. Yeah. And that's always the biggest thing for me. Like I did my uh, my top toys of the year last year list, which I always do. And it, when I'm sitting and looking at two figures, I'm like, okay, so here's the snake eyes, you know, that I've got a million snake eyes. This is nothing new. Or I've got this, you know, mythic legions figure, which mm. is this like fantasy figure. It's an original concept. He's got real metal chains on him, this big bat wings. He's super awesome. Like he's obviously a better figure, but my heart is with the G.I. Joe. Oh, my I God. G.I. Joe. So <laughs> G.I. Joe is going to win. You know, it's just like if I don't have any childhood attachment to the property, it's hard to look at it the same way as yeah. like something that I played with when I was like eight years old. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's why Vertigo, I think it's just nostalgia is definitely bumping her up. And I'm not necessarily looking at the, the figure super objectively. Yeah. Um, it's the character. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Vertigo, you win this round, lady. Yeah. Um, How would you rank these figures? I mean, Stripe at the top for sure. But I'm so I'm not going based really off of my emotional comp- component. I'm going based off what I think looks cool. And so I think that Stripe at the top, followed then by Random because he looks the second most cool. But I mean, I'm totally I'm a sucker for the extreme '90s proportions and everything. Yeah. So it's Strife, then Random, then Vertigo, then Zero, then Pretty Boy. Then pretty boy. Sorry, Pretty Boy. <laughs> <laughs> you're too weird looking. Anything else? Uh, I know you're not a big toy guy, but since we haven't mm. talked toys in a while, it's been like a year plus, yeah. two years. Anything else cool? Do you want to yeah. see this cool toy I have? I don't know if you know who she is, but the mistress. I know who she is. Yeah, me and Miguel met her. We got her autograph. Oh, and I got. Do you collect any like Power Rangers? Like, is Power Rangers in your realm at all? I don't super follow it, but I loved one character, Scorpina. She was like one of the villains, and they had no like she was disappeared forever, ever, ever. And then again for Christmas, there was like a two pack of her fighting the Yellow Ranger, and I was like, oh, and the Yellow Ranger was my favorite Ranger too. And so I got that for Christmas as well, which is just Scorpina. And the other ranger fighting each other, and I was like, "Oh, well, that's it for me and Battle Rangers. Thank you very much. <laughs> that's all I needed." All right. Well, maybe we'll, um, we can even keep talking or whatever. But uh, maybe we should sign off for the sake let's of sign off. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you, Scott, for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's been very a pleasure. informative and good to see you. Yes. Yes. You too. All right. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave us comments below. Go follow Scott on Great Expectations or ScottyDanger.com. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, yeah, any sign off from you or? Um, no, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. Bye.